There are all kinds of houses here in the Las Vegas Valley. Big, little, tall, wide, on wheels. And there's more being built every day. But there are some homes you might not notice because they're underground. Maybe right near the places where you live, go to school, or run and play. If you learn to look carefully, you might be able to see the little half moon shaped doors to these homes. They're called burrows. Now this one was built by humans, but in the wild, they're built by a reptile that's such a good digger, it's named after a gopher. Gopherus agassizi is its scientific name, but most people know it as a desert tortoise. You can call this guy Max, Mojave Max. He got his name from the place we all live in, the Mojave Desert. His ancestors have lived on Earth for millions of years, but in our southwestern deserts today, tortoises are in danger of losing the land where they live and eat, and then they might disappear forever. Max gets to live in a safe place at the Red Rock Canyon Visitor Center. His burrow was built by some nice people who wanted to make sure he had a proper habitat. But tortoises in the wild have to do a lifetime of digging all by themselves. It starts one spring or early summer day when a female tortoise digs a nest under a shrub with her strong legs. She may lay four to eight eggs, and then she's done. It's the only job as a mother that she does. She doesn't sit on the eggs or turn them sometimes like birds do. The warm desert sun shining on their nest does the work for her. And three to four months later, the babies break out of their shells. When tortoises hatch, they all unfold from the ping pong ball sized eggs their mother laid. From the moment they leave the nest and enter the world, the tortoise babies are on their own to travel as much as a third of a mile digging burrows along the way. They're still small and soft because they have very little hardened bone which makes them the perfect snack for all kinds of critters, but especially the ravens. Maybe only one out of a hundred hatchlings will live to be a 15 to 20 year old adult that can reproduce. But those who can survive all the dangers of the desert until they're five will have a bony shell that's hard enough to protect them from most desert dangers, with a plastron for the bottom half and a carapace on their back. They're covered with patterned plates called scoots that are made out of the same stuff as your fingernails. The whole shell works just like a suit of armor. Because the tortoise can pull its head and legs inside, it has extra protection from some of the animals that might want to eat it. But they don't want hungry things to even see them. So you can bet you'll never catch a tortoise dressed up in the kind of bright colored clothes you kids wear. Desert adapted tortoises have the basic tan brown yellow black look on their shells that matches the desert's colors and helps them blend in. But the best way to escape the enemies that want to eat them is to go underground. And they've got all the tools they need to dig. Strong legs that look like they came off of an elephant with nails that are hard enough to make holes all over their desert home. Burrows underground where they can hide and survive. Nests to lay eggs in. They may not be the swimming kind of turtle like their cousins. Come on, they live in one of the driest deserts in the country. But they want water so much that they'll even scratch out a shallow basin in the desert to catch any rain that might fall during the summer. But when they dig burrows, it isn't just for a home or hideout. It's for another reason that's really important to their survival. Because they're cold-blooded critters, exothermic reptiles to be exact, they can't warm up or cool down on their own, so they need the sun outside along with their underground burrows to help them stay just the right temperature to survive. A good burrow is a cozy hole, just wide enough for a tortoise to crawl down and turn around in. They can keep from freezing when it's winter and stay cool during the summer. And the moisture from their own breath helps them conserve water. They need their burrow so much, they may dig a dozen. That way, they'll always be close to one where they can cool down or hide from predators. So if you don't see any desert tortoises around for many months at a time, it's because they're almost always at home in their burrows. They may spend 98% of their lives underground. But when they come up to the surface, they might have to search over a square mile to find all the food they need. You like marshmallows. They like globe mallows, 
along with lots of other desert wildflowers and grass and cactus. They'll even eat up all your dandelions if they ever wander into a developed area or your family adopts one as a pet. That makes them herbivores. They're plant eaters. Flowers and grasses and leaves also give them most of the water they need. The Mojave Desert gets maybe four inches of rain in a year, so tortoises don't get many chances to drink. They have to save up water for a long time, but they can't carry it in a canteen. They have to hold it in their bladder, and they don't go to the bathroom sometimes for a whole year. So you should never ever pick up a tortoise when it's in the wild, because if you did, you'd scare all of the liquid right out of it, and they might die before they ever find enough water again. When it's winter and you're studying in school, they're snoozing underground in a state of brumation where their body cools down, their heartbeat and breathing slow down. They don't eat, just sleep. Until early in spring when they have a built-in alarm clock that wakes them up. They're ready to move and eat. Now, the boy tortoises might go tortoise tipping to show who's boss, using the big gooler horns sticking out from under their necks, or they might dance around to show off for a girl tortoise they like. But when it starts heating up too much, they'll only come out of their burrows early in the morning or late in the afternoon. They'll stay underground and doze longer and longer during the hottest and driest parts of the summer. It's the only way they can stay cool enough to survive when the heat gets up to 140 degrees outside. Ouch! If they come, the summer rains will bring the tortoises out of their burrows again to drink, paddle in the puddles, travel, and eat some more. Then the new batches of hatchlings emerge from their nests to spread out as fast and far as they can all over the Mojave Desert. But these days, desert tortoises have to share space with so many of us humans it makes it hard for them to find all the food and room they need, so they've become what we call a threatened species, and they won't be able to survive without our help. Watch out that you don't run over them or their burrows and never touch them or take them out of the desert. Please pick up your plastic bags and other trash so that they don't accidentally get tangled up. That can make it hard for them to travel and escape the heat. Your bright colored litter and even your old birthday balloons can look just like flower blooms to them. And if they eat any, they can get the world's biggest bellyache or worse. Keep your dogs on a leash so they don't chase after any tortoises. They may think that they're chew toys. And if you ever see a lost tortoise wandering around your neighborhood, this is the only time you should pick one up on your own. Keep it level with the ground, then take it home immediately to your parents and have them call Clark County's Tortoise Pickup Service at 593-9027. They'll give it a ride to safety. Tortoises and kids are just alike in some important ways. You want to eat when you're hungry, drink when you're dry. You love to explore the desert, too. Then you both like to go home to a nice roof over your heads. But you kids also have an extra responsibility to protect the Mojave Desert tortoise so that they can live to be 60, 80, 100 years old, just like you.